video, we're going to take a quick look-see-loo at the MFJ Differential T-Tuner. This is a roller inductor tuner rated at 3,000 watts. This is rated at 1,500 watts peak envelope power for single sideband. So let's take that and um, go at roughly, I'm going to say, four to 500 watts AM. Or FM would be about a probably about a safe power rating for this, and um, RMS wise, and uh, yeah, it's kind of a neat unit actually. I, I have really enjoyed this. I bought this in late 2007, and I ran this quite a bit in my station. I actually ran two um, stations at my house in Washington State, and um, I had my little MFJ 941D on my smaller station in my bedroom and then I ran this one in my uh, larger station on my radio room and um, really got a lot of use out of this thing so generally I don't like using an antenna tuner per se as far as tuning an antenna um, I like to get my antennas pretty close to resident frequency or whatever frequency I'm operating on any given mood and then what I'll do is I'll use this to touch it up a little bit so say, for instance, if I'm uh, down on channel uh, 6, 27025, and do a little bit of AM work, I usually tune my antennas for that. But maybe um, maybe I'll get a weird hankering to go up to, like, say, uh, 28400, 420 or something like that, and do a little bit of 10 meter work. Well, then I'll use this to touch it up, to touch up my antenna and get a better SWR. Mostly, though, I use these tuners for... Um, an antenna switch. So what I would do is on the dummy load position here, I would put in my 1500 watt dummy load. On coax 1, I would use my vertical antenna, and on coax 2, I used my horizontal beam. Never did have a balanced line, just never really got into that. So I do like the features on the front, and we'll see as we've already started here at the antenna, we'll go like this. Coax 1 direct, coax 2 direct, external dummy load, coax 1, coax 2, and balanced line. Another way you guys could do this if you didn't want to run a dummy load is just say like run your vertical ground plane on here and then vertical on your beam and horizontal on your beam. Or maybe you have a 10 meter vertical or something. Put it here and then run your CB stuff here if you want. I just like this because of this flexibility. All right, this is a this is a great thing about these tuners. Okay, over here we have our switch to turn our pilot lamp on and off. I replaced the white light in here with a blue LED, five millimeter blue LED, and it's kind of indirectly lighting this, so it kind of gives us a really mellow blue color at night. It's just not just blowing you away because sometimes those blue LEDs are just pretty. Well, they're gnarly. They're too blue. Over here. We have uh, our control for our crosshair meter. I'm starting to get used to these guys. I, I'm old school. I, I, I don't really like this stuff, but I'm, I'm getting used to it. So we have the high and low reading for our meter, and then we have peak, what I call feel-good watts, and then RMS right here. And this is within about 10 or 15% of my bird on any given day. All right, for controls here, we have our differential capacitance, and then we have our large roller inductor here. And I like this because what I can do is I can tune for uh, my best SWR. Like, say, for instance, I'm going to use this in um, oh, 10 meter ham. What I'll do is I'll go to coax 1, and then I will tune this to, say, 27400. I'll get my best SRW. Then what I do is I stick my little pin in there, and I zero it out at 000. Then when I go back to, say, uh, AM on channel 6 or, or, or 38 or whatever, on sideband, of course, on 38, then I'll go back down to coax 1 direct, and therefore I usually don't need the tuner. I'll have anywhere between a 1 to 1 or a 1 to 3 SWR. I go up to 10 meters or something on that same antenna, then I can go here, and then I can go back to my zero zero setting, and it, it, it just makes it easier for me. So I kind of like how they did this with the old school digits here. That is kind of cool. So, oh, by the way, I paid roughly $379 or $389 back in the day for this. I see today that MFJ has these going for, I believe it was $459 on their website. I'm sure it can be had cheaper on a ham radio uh 
uh, website or even, I hate to say it, Dr. Evil's site for Amazon. There is a uh, retailer, an online retailer, and I won't say any uh, say their name. They kind of upset me, and so I won't deal with those guys anymore. <coughs> DX. <coughs> anyway, and um, so honestly, uh, for some of this stuff, I just go to Amazon. If you're an Amazon Prime uh, member, you know, you get this thing in a day or two. Um, if you have like a, you know, a website you like, like a, a ham radio outlet or something like that, I'm sure you can get a good deal. But anyway, mid 400s. I honestly think mid 400s is a little spendy for this piece, considering there's competitive units out there that I think maybe do the same job, if not a little bit better for just a few dollars more. Okay. So it has the newer MFJ styling, which has the, um, printed, um, uh, what did they call this, uh, Mylar face on here. Um, I like the fact they do that because the older MFJs were just silk screened aluminum and they would mark up pretty easy and the paint would come off them. The cabinet, as far as the outside, um, goes the uh, paint or powder coat on this. It's a lot better. MFJ really kicked it up a notch. MFJ is also doing a little bit better on construction as far as like, you know, putting more screws in these cabinets. Um, unlike they used to, I got into a bad habit of setting a lot of stuff on top of here and I do have a scratch on it. However, it took a lot to get that mark in there. So yeah, I like it. She's kind of a big girl. I mean, if you compare it against, uh, another piece of equipment, I know that when they show this on the uh, catalog, it doesn't really look all that big. When I pulled this thing out of the box, I'm like, holy Toledo, that's like 15, 17 inches long. All right, let's lift the bonnet and see what she looks like inside. Okay, so inside, we'll start at the front. We have our meter assembly here, and then we have our printed circuit board for meter controls here, and they did a really nice job on that. I think they cleaned that up quite well. We have, um, for our capacitance, we have a big open air capacitor, which is of decent quality, I believe. I mean, I haven't had any problems with it, with this particular one, but let's go over to this one. All right, so this is the roller inductor tuner, and I really like how they did this. This is, you know, kind of a neat way to build it, especially for a modern piece. If this was an old Viking or something. I know the construction would be better, but we're not in the 50s anymore, so we do things different nowadays. So one thing that kind of irked me on this, when I got this, this was dry, and you see that main gear, how it's got a warp in it? Okay. Anyway. Um, it's smooth. It works fine. There's no problems with that. I think this was stamped. Yep. Yeah, look at this. February 28th of 07. And I liked how they did this. Their little antenna switch here is kind of neat. They used real ceramic insulators. Those are not plastic. A little four to one ballon. Um, honestly, it's probably three or 400 watt ballon, maybe. Um, you put a lot, you put any kind of a wire on there, you're going to want to make sure that wire is fairly resonant before I push any amount of power through here, quite honestly. I think you'll let the smoke out of that, maybe. Um, I like what MFJ has been doing lately. Um, I would say within the last decade or so, they learned to stop using rivets. So they're actually using real hardware. So they've got little star washers and nuts, screws and nuts. So that's kind of nice. I don't expect to have all four of those holes filled, but this beats the hell out of rivets. All right. On the back panel, we have our dummy load, coax one and two, and transmitter or input connector. And like I say, um, do whatever you want with this thing. You know, put another antenna on it. It doesn't have to be a dummy load just because it's marked that way. So for you new hams, you don't necessarily have to you know, do it like this. You could put another antenna out here, secondary antenna. Yeah, pretty neat. And then here's our little standard 12 volt connector, center pin being positive, outer ring being negative. Pretty neat. All right. So I did have a problem with this tuner. All right. So back in the day, back in the early 90s, I heard a lot of MFJ haters out there saying, 
well, they're junk, they're garbage, you need to go through and redo them, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, that's true. I've had to do a couple solder joints here and there, and I have had to tighten some screws. But i got to be honest with you, I don't care if this is a Pal Star or, or a Viking or anything out there. I would go through and do that anyway. Once you get one of these in line, they do take a little bit of physical abuse. There are moving parts in here. Um, you know, you don't really want to have to tear your system apart just to do some repairs. So I would do that anyway. Now, if I remember right, everything seemed to be pretty tight in here. So I was pretty good with that. Um, you may want to go through and check this little nut down here. One thing I failed to check was this right here. Okay, this is, this is how they do the roller inductor on this. And what happened was this started arcing out on me. And I was only putting maybe 300 watts through it. And so what I had to do is I had to take this assembly off and then I had to go up underneath here and I cleaned the little uh, mar arcing marks on the underside of this tab here and then I reassembled it and I've never had a problem since. So yeah, I don't want to sound like a hater, but just go through and check everything out and just make sure. This could happen to any company, quite honestly. But yeah, anyway, that's my little brief overview of the 986. If you can find one of these used for a couple hundred bucks, I'd definitely go for it. And, you know, go through the inside, make sure everything's cool. But I'd definitely go for it. I don't know if I'd pay the 450 though. Um, so I haven't shopped for ham gear in quite a while, but I think Pal Palstar makes a, a unit, an entry-level unit, in about this price range. So maybe check that out. But gosh, I... I'm not going to get rid of this. This doesn't leave the collection. I can always I can always find a use for this thing. And it makes one hell of an antenna switch. All right, you guys, please leave questions or comments down below.